Today we will focus on a common issue with Android devices, humidity damage. As a first step, it's crucial to disconnect the battery to prevent short circuits on the motherboard. Hello everyone, I'm Adriana and in today's video, with the help of Leonardo, we will attempt to fix a water damaged device. We will also discuss about the cost of this repair a little bit later. Using a standard or electric Phillips screwdriver, we'll remove the screws from the middle case. Here we have the device NFC antenna, which needs to be removed. In the next step, we remove all the connectors from the motherboard. This includes the displays connector, the sub motherboard connector, the earpiece connector, among others. Since the motherboard is water damaged, we must to be careful when removing it as it may be strongly adhered to the chassis due to the rust. Here we can clearly see the condition of the motherboard. It has corrosion all over. It's best not to talk about the chassis. It's quite corroded. For me, this step is one of the most important in the entire process. Visual inspection is a crucial step. It allows us to assess the severity of the problem by identifying signs of corrosion. In some cases, we might need to lift certain integrated circuits, while in others, we may not. This step largely determines the likelihood of success of the repair. We have a quality microscope and a camera connected to a screen for this inspection. We will start with manual cleaning using a contact cleaner. In most of the cases, about 95%, this is the best option. We only resort to an ultrasonic cleaner in exceptional situation where the motherboard is very damaged. To clean the connectors, we use anti-static tweezers, a piece of cotton and the contact cleaner. The latter is preferably to isopropyl alcohol as it contains protective oils and specific chemical compounds for effective cleaning. If the rust is stubborn, we apply a bit of contact cleaner and give it once over with the brush. Once the connector is cleaned, we proceed with the next one, repeating the same process for each. If the rust is very stubborn, we can use the tip of the surgical scalpel to remove it. It's very important to take note of these tips, especially if you are new in this. Otherwise, it might be beneficial to invest in specialized courses.
Before continuing with the cleaning process, it's crucial to check the motherboard power consumption. There is no point in cleaning the device if the motherboard cannot be recovered. We first solve the problems on the motherboard and then we deal with the other areas. To power on the device, I use a flex from a recycled battery. I have recycled numerous flexes for Android devices, allowing me to start most of them without issues. Before recycling a battery, I always remove the flex and note the model in a notebook for future references. In this way, I don't waste time finding it. We are talking about rare models that don't come into the shop every day and have specific connectors. This flex is directly connected to a power laboratory supply. In this way, we can see the consumption in real time. Here, at the top right, we have an image with the power laboratory supply. Later on, we'll look at the consumption. When we are sure that the motherboard works, we can proceed to clean the entire device. On more than one occasion, the screen can be internally burned. With a bit of experience and knowledge of the motherboard consumption, we can infer whether the board is okay or not. We remove the motherboard again to continue with the cleaning process. I treat all connectors and components of the device in the same way, with cotton, tweezers and contact cleaner. If the corrosion persists, I use a GBC metal brush known for its effectiveness. In the video description, I will provide the purchase links for these brushes and other tools like the electrical screwdriver. They are really good. The price of this repair is around 100 euros. Given that this is a high-end device, it's quite an economical price. The price depends on wherever is a regular customer at our store, if it's a repair from the internet, and then there is an additional of transport cost and such on. We try to be transparent in whole process. Behind every repair, there is five, seven, even 10 years of experience. When you have a lot of experience, everything seems easy and everyone watching can do it, but it's really different. Each repair is different and you can encounter a thousand things along the way. That's when experience paves the way. It's not the same to repair 100 devices as it's to repair thousands and thousands over the years. For this reason, often the cheaper option can end up being more expensive. From people from other countries it might seem expensive, but here in Spain we have to pay a lot of taxes and staff expenses. And not to forget the most important thing, always invest in training.
We move now to our power laboratory source to check the device consumption. This is another important step in our process. We have to perfectly understand the consumption, otherwise we won't grow as a technician. For this reason, I sold an intensive three-hour courses last year so that people understand this important process. I have a significant phrase. If you can't explain it to your grandmother, you haven't fully understood it. Remember this. Once the device is assembled, we access Samsung Hidden menu to check all the function and ensure that the device works 100%. Here's a tip for a new technicians. You have to dedicate a bit of money each year to your training. Guys, he's Leonardo. This was today's repair. We hope you like it and you learned something. See you in the next one. Bye bye.